Hey everybody, so um, I know it's been a really long time since I made a video and I'm really sorry about that. I've been really busy. Uh, I've just got one thing to say before I go on. Um, you gotta check out my other channel. Me and um, we're actually, I've actually started a collab channel and I'm still looking for other members. Uh, so if you can find, if you think of anybody else, so uh, if you have like a friend or if you wanna do it, that'd be fantastic. So just kind of either message me um, yeah, so message me and if you want to join and I'll see what I can do. Okay. So today I'm going to be talking about reincarnation. So a lot of um, things, uh, sorry. Reincarnation is, you know, what happens uh, when you die. Well, that's what I believe, right? And it's actually a really common pagan and Wiccan way of living, right? And it's, uh, that's, how, that's usually what people believe happens to them when they die. So, reincarnation is the process used by the spirit um, to, for the souls to go through their evolutionary cycles. Uh, with each lifetime, the soul repays karmic debt and receives rewards for karmic credits and sets up situations for the case, the soul, to face a spiritual lesson to make choices prog progress in the enlightenment of the soul. So, if we learn our lessons, we move forward, right? Um, so each life is basically based on um, what each way, each life is basically based on everything that uh, we need to learn so we can make towards enlightenment. So um, everything that the reincarnation bases around is uh, the spirit, right? And the spirit is the pure divine energy of a single being, right? It is the culminated of all the person's lifetimes and energies. So it is, it is the total spiritual essence of the divine ethereal plane. Um, and then the, it actually bases more bases around the soul, which is the subset or the smaller section of our spirit, right? So um, the soul is actually basically um, what pulls together from our spiritual DNA. So how I believe that spiritual DNA works, and this is actually a, something that has been studied for a long time, and um, so it'd be really overwhelming to put all of all of our past lifetimes into one, right? So why would I? So every single past life that I've ever, ever had, why would I do that, right? So what it actually happens is it works like um, we've got uh, 20, we usually take about 22 uh, of our past lives plus our life now, which equals 23, and that makes it the spiritual uh, DNA or the soul of the reincarnation. The competition of who we are, the color of eyes, skin tone, hair color, the family genetics, and so on are wrapped up in our physical DNA that we get from our parents, right? But remember, everything in life is about balance and the spiritual universe does not have the order and the structure to the smallest detail. The 23 physical DNA composites and uh, balance with the 23 spiritual DNA composites that make us who we are in the mind, body, and spirit. So if you've actually either taken biology or uh, grade 9 science, actually, um, you've learned that you get 23 chromosomes from uh, 23 chromosomes from each of your parents. So that that's why it makes sense, right? So I got 23 from my mom and 23 from my dad. So what's included in our spiritual DNA? So we got our origin and purpose, so a mission, for example, like uh, to be a Palladian bridge builder. Uh, our talents, such as communication, our skills, such as a skilled sculptor, our environments, issues such as living with a big family, for instance, um, our background or creed, such as being Irish, our potential, such as spiritual awareness, and our spiritual balance, such as incarnation of female when most of your previous lives have been male. Now, a lot of people ask why um, or how, who chooses, like, who or who chooses which lives we bring into this one. Um, so before you are born into your physical body, your soul actually makes a few decisions, right? Like, um, like if they were to decide which past lives to pull into this one, or you decide which karmic events you'll work on, or you can make an agreement with other souls to join coming life to resolve personal karma, things like that. And what happens when a soul completes a mission? Well, that's a big question. Once a soul has made its choices and actually left, um, and actually completed the mission, it will actually leave the physical world. After death, the soul typically remains in the physical body if it is put uh, until it's put to rest, if that is possible, of course. There are the situations where the soul, like war, floods, natural disasters, where the soul cannot be put to rest. In that case, the soul has to make its own decision to make it all the way there. Um, when the physical connections have been put to rest, the soul will travel to the spiritual realm. I'm not even going to go there, what it looks like or anything like that. 
um, then the soul spends some time readjusting or remembering, at which time um, it is time to rejoin the energy of the larger spirit it came from. So typically, their spirit remains in the spiritual realm for 50, 60 years or more. The time does not flow in the spiritual realm, though, the way we think it is. So timing of transition, transitions is not set in stone. Um, it's very based on the, it's very much based on the choices of the spirit. Um, and then we are, uh, such as taking on one of the spirit guides' role as a person who was incarnated in the physical world, right? So that would happen when you're enlightened and things like that. So if you reach enlightenment, and when the spirit has completed its work in the spiritual realm and decide to inca incarnate in another physical form, the whole process of building a new spiritual blueprint starts all over again, which would be fun. Um, now, something that's a really big thing is transition by murder or suicide. Um, metaphysics no different, right? It's bad, it's morally wrong, and comes with a good deal of karma, right? Um, and if a spirit decides to incarnate, it makes numerous commitments to the other spirits and learns to grow, grow towards enlightenment. Anything who breaks those um, agreements is that interference and carries a heavy price. Everyone has free will and the choices to make decisions in their daily lives. A bank robber who may be accidentally shot an innocent bystander doesn't get off scot-free. Um, and his actions is no different to a person who sets out a plans to murder a specific individual, right? The actions set a spirit back on a scheme progression to enlightenment. How much it depends on the person, the amount of karma they carry. Um, so, for example, right, so if I went to, and I went to kill somebody, right, and I did it on purpose, or if I killed somebody by the stand, they're both the same. I'm still going to get the same amount of karma, right? Suicide is a little different, but it's considered to be a great interference. Walking in the physical incarnation is a great gift. Tossing that gift away is just wrong. It's just really like, um, what it, it's what some would call like a sin, like the Catholics would call a sin. There's a great movie that depicts the consequence on um, the suicide life. It's called What Dreams May Come, starring Robin Williams. When a person commits suicide, the soul falls into limbo, which is the scary. Their consciousness isn't part of a physical world, nor are they part of a spiritual world. They cannot, get to the, they cannot connect to the divine consciousness, so they cannot see the path of the spiritual realm. They do not have the strength to connect to the physical world, so they cannot ask for help. They remain all their emotions, traumas, and troubles intact in the realm of nothingness. There's many accounts of relatives and psychic groups encountering these lost souls through meditation and channeled readings. This isn't the connection of the lost soul making the living, but a rather effort to write a region in the realm of the limbo. Right? In the person doing that opens the doorway of light called to the lost soul, helping them understand what they have done and trying to guide them to the white light of the divine path into the universe. Um, the choice goes to instill a hand to the lost soul, and they become frightened and back away, or choose to walk forward into the divine consciousness and move back into the path of treason. That's up to them. Suicide is not the answer and does not resolve any pain or hurt. So, and the last thing is, what is the pur purpose of being? You know, how would we understand, right? People, it's impossible to understand. I guess it'd be more to, like, understand the karmic, you know, to get rid of, uh, to kind of, like, finish off the karmic debt that you owe, to, you know, understand, to learn life lessons and to add to the universal consciousness, right? Because if you've just got everybody's just the same, it's always the same. Okay? you got to add to the universal consciousness and just keep adding and adding and adding. And, um, and it is the moment when the spirit becomes pure energy and light that becomes the one with the divine. So yeah, this is my video on reincarnation. I hope you liked it and hope you guys have a great day. Blessed be and goodbye.